Question 1. Is it possible to establish a connection between Amazon Cloud and a corporate data center? How? Answer. Yes, it's possible. For this, first, a virtual private network is to be established between the virtual private cloud and the organization's network. After this, the connection can simply be created and data can be accessed reliably. Question 2. What will happen if you launch the instances in Amazon VPC? Answer. This is a common approach that is considered when it comes to launching EC2 instances. Each instance will be having a default IP address of the instances are launched in Amazon VPC. This approach is also considered when you need to connect cloud resources with the data centers. Question 3. Name the method that you will use for moving the data to a very long distance. Answer. Amazon transfer acceleration is a good option. There are other options such as Snowball but the same doesn't support data transfer over a very long distance such as among continents. Amazon transfer acceleration is the best option because it simply throttles the data with the help of network channels that are optimized and assures very fast data transfer speed. Question 4. Is it possible to speed up data transfer in Snowball? How? Answer. Yes, it's possible. There are certain methods for this. First is simply copying from different hosts to the same Snowball. Another method is by creating a group of smaller files. This is helpful as it cut down the encryption issues. Data transfer can also be enhanced by simply copy operations again and again at the same time provided the workstation is capable to bear the load. Question 5. It is possible to use S3 with EC2 instances. How? Answer. Yes, it's possible if the instances are having root devices and they are supported by the instance storage. Amazon uses one of the very reliable, scalable, fast, as well inexpensive networks for hosting all their websites. With the help of S3, it is possible for the developers to get access to the same network. There are tools available in AMEs that users can consider when it comes to executing systems in EC2. The files can simply be moved between EC2 and S3. Question 6. Name the approach that restricts the access of third-party software in storage service to S3 bucket named Company Backup. Answer. There is a policy named Custom Ing User Policy that limits the S3 OP in the bucket. Question 7. What are the states available in processor state control? Answer. It contains two states and they are OP state. It has different levels starting from P0 to P15. P0 represents the highest frequency and P15 represents the lowest frequency. OC state. Its levels are from CO to C6 where C6 is the strongest state for the processor. It is possible to customize these states in a few EC2 instances which enable users to customize processor as per need. Question 8. Name the practices available when it comes to securing the Amazon EC2. Answer. This can be done through several practices. Review of the protocols in security group is to be monitored regularly and it is to be ensured that the principle of least is applicable over there. Next practice is using access management and AWS identity for controlling and securing the access. Access is to be restricted to hosts and networks that are trusted. In addition to this, only those permissions are open which are required and not any other. It would also be good to disable password-based logins for the instances. Question 9. Is it possible to run the multiple websites on EC2 server with one elastic IP address? Answer. No, it's not possible. We need more than one elastic IP in such a case. Question 10. What do you know about the private and the public address? Answer. Well, the private address is directly correlated with the instance and is sent back to EC2 only in case it is terminated or stopped. On the other side, public address is correlated in a similar manner with the instance till it is terminated or stopped. It is possible to replace the public address with elastic IP. This is done when a user wants it to stay with instance as per the need. Question 11. Tell us various parameters that you should consider while selecting the availability zone. Answer. For this, there are various parameters that should be kept in mind. Some of them are performance, pricing, latency, as well as response time. 
Question 12. What do you know about an AME? Answer. AME are generally considered as the templates for the virtual machines. While starting an instance, it is possible to select pre-baked AMEs that AME commonly have in them. However, not all the AMEs are available to use free of cost. It is also possible to have a customized AME and the most common reason to use the same is nothing but saving the space on Amazon Web Service. This is done in case a group of software is not required and AME can simply be customized optimized in that situation. Question 13. Which instance can be used for deploying a four-node cluster of Hadoop in Amazon Web Services? Answer. It is possible to use i2.large or C4.8x large instance for this. However, C.4bx needs better configuration on the PC. At some stages, you can simply launch the EMR for automatic configuration of the server for you. Data can be put into S3 and EMR is able to pick it from there. It will load your data in S3 again after processing it. Question 14. When instances are launched in the cluster placement group, what are the network performance parameters that can be expected? Answer. Actually, it depends largely on the type of instance, as well as on the specification of network performance. In case they are started in the placement group, you can expect following parameters, or 20 GBPs in case of full duplex or when in multi-floor or up to 10 GBPs in case of a single floor or outside the group, the traffic is limited to 5 GBPs. Question 15. Name the instances types for which the multi-us deployments are available. Answer. The multi-us deployments are simply available for all the instances irrespective of their types and use. Question 16. What is the difference between on-demand instance and a spot instance? Answer. Spot instance is similar to bidding and the price of bidding is known as spot price. Both spot and on-demand instances are pricing models. In both of them, there is no commitment for the exact time from the user end. Without upfront payment, spot instance can be used while the same is not possible in case of on-demand instance. It needs to be purchased first and the price is higher than spot instance. Question 17. When there is a need to acquire costs with an EIP? Answer. EIP stands for Elastic Internet Protocol Address. Costs are acquired with an EIP when the same is associated and allocated with a stopped instance. In case only one elastic IP is there with the instance you are running, you will not be charged for it. However, in case the IP is attached to a stopped instance or does not attach to any instance, you need to pay for it. Question 18. At what value the instance's tenancy attribute is to be set for running it on single tenant hardware? Answer. It should be set to the dedicated instance for smoothly running it on single tenant hardware. Others' values are not valid for this operation. Question 19. How terminating and stopping an instance are the different processes? Answer. Instance performs a regular shutdown when it is stopped. It then performs transactions. As the entire EBS volumes remain present, it is possible to start the instance anytime again when you want. The best thing is when the instance remains in the stopped state, users don't need to pay for that particular time. Upon termination, the instance performs a regular shutdown. After this, the Amazon EBS volumes start deleting. You can stop them from deleting simply by setting the delete on termination to false. Because the instance gets deleted, it is not possible to run it again in the future. Question 20. Why is it not possible to change or modify the private IP address of an EC2 instance when it is running? Answer. This is because the private IP remains with the instance permanently or through the life cycle, thus it cannot be changed or modified. However, it is possible to change the secondary private address.